First of all, I'd like to say welcome to the seminar of Professor Dr. Sadullah Masai. Uh, actually, this is a very nice, uh, it was a very nice time for me that when the, the Dean of the uh, Management Faculty, Professor Dr. Eyal Prakash, called me, he said to me that uh, I have one graduate student, and this fellow is a physicist. Uh, he, if you are available, please come to my office and I want to invite him to you. Of course, uh, that, that was a time to make me very happy that beyond uh, here we have one a very important professor coming from the Iran. Uh, when I met him, uh, I saw this someone and said that I remember that he was uh, already visited our university before, but it was a very nice time, very nice story for him. And thanks to him that uh, he accepted my uh, invitation to give seminar in our department. Last week he was also with us in the, the seminar of uh, Professor Alexander Zul. And he said, he said to me, the title of his speech, which is seen here, the site selection of Iranian National Observatory. And I'm sure that uh, you will learn many things about uh, these observatories, how they establish it how they uh, choose the best place for its site. Now with your clubs, I would like to invite him here to give his speech. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Mr. for having this very big project of the Iranian National Observatory and the site selection of this observatory. But first of all, let me congratulate you for the occasion of Nowruz, a tradition that is inspired in this school by 11 countries, including Turkey, North Cyprus, Iran, and uh, other regional countries. Uh, it is an intangible cultural heritage of this region and uh, we hope a peaceful and friendly region of the uh, countries and the region of all the world uh, for this year, for coming year. Uh, I suggested to talk about some theoretical uh, subjects, but Professor Sakali said that since our department are working mostly on the Medical works, it is better to talk uh, about some experimental and empirical uh, work. Then I suggested to talk about the site selection of Iranian National Observatory. This is started uh, from 18 years ago, and we hope that we can finish it at most uh, uh, for three uh, years uh, later. Uh, this is a uh, <coughs> slide showing that uh, from 19 to 15th century our forefathers have constructed 23 observatories in ancient Iran at that time. Uh, which the famous one was the Malab Observatory, uh, which you see the, the Malab Observatory complex here. It has a central tower which uh, include the uh, very large quadrant about 18.5 meter uh, elevation and other uh, instruments, more than 25 instruments at that time were uh, constructed there and working. And uh, this is made by Khaja Nasir Tusi, who was a great scientist and also a great political man, the minister of Iraq in Iran. And uh, he was inscribed also as a famous scientist in UNESCO. We have 34 well-known personalities from Iran, which is inscribed in UNESCO. Six of them are astronomers. So Iran is known as the uh, country which has served very much to the astronomy. Uh, it was not only an observatory, but also a very large complex of uh, libraries, about 400,000 book at that time, and foundry and tooling and everything was there. There was 120 scientists working at this observatory from uh, region and also from abroad, for example, from China and other places. Uh, about 30 years ago, which I was an MSC student in Sri 
Chinese University. I went to China for an IEB meeting. Then we visited the China Observatory, ancient observatory. They said that some people has gone at the past to Mara Observatory, the director of that ancient observatory, and learned about the instruments and the building, and then came back and uh, initiated that observatory. So this means that the Mara Observatory has been influenced as a model uh, for uh, extending the observatories in the region. Uh, this is a uh, celestial globe made by the Muhammad al Orsi. His father was one of the greatest astronomers at that time. And it is made by bronze, and the, all these celestial spheres, such as meridian, ecliptic, and the equator, and other celestial spheres, are uh, made by gold and silver. Now it is in Dresden of Germany. Uh, it is uh, translated there about uh, 1562 and it is one of the famous uh, ancient instruments of the uh, observation. Uh, this is another uh, uh, instrument which is called the uh, Armillary Sphere. I and one of my students have made it, just replicated it by wood, but it, the original one was from bronze. It is very large, uh, the size of this room, and it was one of the important instruments just for uh, uh, finding the coordinate of the celestial uh, objects. The same one is due to Tycho Brahe, which was in the Danmark Observatory. He used this instrument to uh, find the exact position of the uh, planets, such as Mars and others. These are also another instrument which is uh, uh, azimuthal quadrant by Khajan Asi, another one by, by Emerson, another one by... This is due to Tariyad-Din in Tariyad-Din Observatory in Turkey. That observatory also was very important. In the history of the evolution of the observatories, the Malab Observatory, then Tariyad-Din, then Dombard the Observatory, the uh, Antiko Brahe was very important observatory and has influenced the evolution of astronomy of the past. And this one is also for Tycho Brahe. These are ancient instruments that we had in uh, the, the astronomers uh, in them to use the telescopes or new instruments that we know. Uh, but now you see we have uh, very large telescopes now, 10 meter cake observatory. The telescope's aperture and mirror is 10 meter in diameter. It's a very huge instrument. And 9 meter, 8 meter, 8 meter, 8 meter, 6. These are large size telescopes. And uh, of course, uh, there is medium sized telescopes, 3 meter up to 6. This is now called medium sized telescope. And uh, these are the telescopes under construction. Of course, this slide is uh, belongs to 10 years ago. These two now are operational. Can uh, twin interferometer optical telescope and also a very large telescope which is working by interferometry, optical interferometry. It's a very, very high technology telescope. And this is the largest one in the world, ground-based telescope, ground-based observatory which is made by the cooperation of 16 European countries and it is the largest one in the world and, uh, but also there are uh, another <coughs> instruments which are under construction and these are uh, uh, under studies 10 meter or relatively large telescope if this uh, telescope become operational the size of this Sirius star would be appear the, uh, uh, the size of moon, full moon. So this will be a very exciting uh, instrument which uh, the people believe that at 2025 it will be operational uh, uh, at an uh, optimistic point of view. So you see the, the astronomers trying to build larger and larger telescopes, 150, 30 meters. This is one of the mirrors of the VLT, which is taking uh, to the mountain of the Paraman and Lassi in the Shili uh, country. Shili has the best sky for observation. The scenic parameter of the Shili is 0.5 r second. That is the best one known in the world. 
So the only countries like to make their telescopes and mount their telescopes at this position. Uh, Europe uh, has uh, their telescopes there and other countries also. Of course, there exist some other uh, places such as Canary Islands, Hawaii Islands, Monarchy Mountains, which the United States and other countries are mounted, are mounted their telescopes there. So whenever we find the best seeing, uh, there are some other customers that like uh, to mount their telescopes there. Europe since have not good seeing, uh, mostly cloudy sky and not good climate, then they, are, uh, uh, they like to uh, mount their telescopes in other places that the seeing point is better. For example, in Europe you have not more than 2 meter telescope, the largest one is about 2 meter. This is the VLT for 8.2 meter telescopes which are working by interferometry. This is very, very high-tech and uh, uh, adaptive optics, active optics, which are very high-tech uh, instruments. Also, here is the monarchy in the United States. You see here the twin kick uh, telescopes, which have 10 meter diameter, and Subaru from Japan and other telescopes are mounted there for other countries. In ESO, you see that this is the ESO initially. You see many telescopes are mounted by other countries. So this is another slide showing that uh, when we find a good uh, place for observation, the other countries also are interested to take their telescope there. But after those 23 observatories that all forefathers made up to 16th century, about 500 years, we had nothing in Iran about the making observatories. Just 50 years ago, Professor Subuti, he is Professor Subuti, and at that time he was a young in Chicago uh, University, and this is Fred Hoyt. Here is Shiraz, Fred Hoyt coming to Iran for uh, opening the uh, Shiraz observatory. It houses about half a meter, 20 inch telescope. So the largest telescope that now we have in Iran is about half a meter. It's not enough for the uh, uh, exploring the world. We need larger and bigger telescopes to do reasonable research. Half a meter telescope is enough just for education or demonstrating elementary astrophysics, not enough for research. So this is the uh, half a meter telescope of Biruni uh, Observatory. I was a student at this, uh, this university in Shiraz and I was responsible for 12 years for this observatory uh, when I was a student or after education. So, uh, what we must do? We should have at least 3 or 4 meter telescope to cooperate with the projects in the world. Smaller than it is not enough. So we decided to uh, construct our national observatory. We had a workshop for sightseeing. We invited uh, Professor Sarazin. He is the number one person in science <coughs> in the world. He has uh, found the best place in the Shiri. He was responsible for such selection of European Southern Observatory. And Professor Kersi, who unfortunately passed away, at that time he invited from the Paul Sanatti University to Ruse. And uh, Tandon from India and uh, Farouk Makili, who was Iranian scientist, was the uh, dean of the astronomy uh, department of the NIS Observatory at that time. And we invited them to have a workshop how we can find the best place in Iran just for site selection of national observatory. We started the project in Zanjan uh, uh, Institute of Advanced of Basic Science. I was there uh, up to five years ago, then I transferred to Shaykh Beish University. Uh, we started the project here. Uh, this is Mark Salazi and this is Professor Guinan. Professor Guinan was a young scientist in Shiraz uh, Observatory when I was a student there. After the revolution, he left. Now he is the head of the IAU Commission for Binary Stars. He's a great scientist. Uh, we, are, we had their help uh, for our site selection. Of course, at that time, I went to Nice Observatory to ask 
The Professor Martin Guru to comment, uh, uh, find the best place in Iran for our national observatory, but uh, they asked much more money for that. We decided to do ourselves. So we asked them to have some workshop to learn about that. The background physics of site selection is fluid dynamics in the presence of turbulence. We should measure the turbulence of the atmosphere. This is the main parameter for finding the site scene. Uh, we decided to do all this by consulting discrete scientists. We, uh, can, we had uh, 35 candidates, these uh, red marks are 35 candidates for site selection. We studied by uh, meteorological parameters, by the uh, shiny days, the seismic uh, studies. Uh, Meteorological studies, this is the wind rose which uh, shows the speed and direction of the wind. That is very important because wind makes a turbulent, uh, the, the atmosphere as a turbulent condition. So uh, we draw uh, the wind rose for all those candidate places. And by meteorological study further, we found four regions. Of course, this is another uh, for uh, wind speed for statistical data for more than 25 years. We got them from synoptic uh, uh, stations of the Meteorological Organization of Iran, and then we studied by wind speed and also the car wheel for those candidate places. Just by meteorological studies, we finally found four regions which is uh, better than the rest. That was the Kerman region, Birjan region, and Horn and Kashan region. Uh, these are the central part of the country, and this is at the 